אני יוני אסטיו, רן פוליאקין עם נידה. Oh, that's a very interesting story. Late 90s, the world uh, was very, very busy with nanotechnology. And apparently, Sony in Japan invested uh, over a billion dollars trying to find the ultimate nanotechnology for flat panel display. However, they decided to stop the project. And I got a call from uh, one of the leaders, and they suggested that together we can move this technology into healthcare. Namely, we can move from television into X-ray stores. So I looked it up and I said, okay, makes sense. And that's how in 2012, we started that. Actually, we have good people. I mean, uh, people uh, that we work with have different ideas, creativities, and as a team, we came up with first the technology idea of changing the 100 years of William Rentgen's X-ray source into something that's called cold cathode. This is semiconductor that is replacing the filament of William Rentgen, and by that, providing reduction of cost, reduction of uh, radiation, and actually something that is much, much more accessible. The power of myself is uh, curiosity. I'm a very curious guy. So if I see some problem, I, I need to find a solution. Also, I love technology and I love to make big impact. I think that uh, if you look at our companies, you can see that there is a combination. On one end, it's disruptive technology. On the other end, we want to make a real impact on the world. Namely, we want to change the world. I think there are so many things that we can, uh, we can do better. I think that with technology, we can make people much happier, much healthier. And uh, I'm talking about people all over the world, not only in rich countries, you know, the US, Korea, Israel, but actually there are many countries that people do not have the basic services of healthcare, food, and other things. And I believe that we have access to technology, we have access to money. We should actually live a better world when we pass away to our kids, and that's part of our passion. I think investors are actually realized, not only a prototype. This technology is what we call deep technology. In many, many years of development in Sony days and then in Nanox days, of the top engineers, top PhDs, it's called nanotechnology. And it's truly a deep technology. And I think investors and we, of course, they see that this technology can change the next 100 years of the world. In addition, I think that what we do in Nanox is not about technology. What we do in Nanox is about providing, uh, we call it democratization of healthcare. And uh, with that, I think investors and ourselves, our employees, our partners, see the hope. And I think uh, post-COVID-19, people are looking for hope. Hope is a very important narrative, in my opinion, uh, as to the future. So overall, I think that uh, Nano representing not only deep technology, but also the hope for a better healthcare environment. First of all, I think that uh, post-COVID-19, everybody understands that what's happening in China can impact New York City. I know there are different countries, but in fact, we people live in one planet. And we need to be very, very uh, aware that things that happening in one country can impact another country. And I think post-COVID-19, we realize that it's okay for us to do uh, a diagnostic and remote medical. So it's okay for you to communicate via Zoom with your doctor and get some advice. This is very new. In some countries, it was not allowed until COVID-19. Moreover, we also realize big data and the AI will play a major role in the future diagnostic of early detection. Early detection can be for me, for God forbid, cancer, but early detection can also be for early pandemic. And that's something very important. Specifically for Nanox, Nanox is one of those uh, devices that potentially can actually identify the coronavirus when it's in your lungs. And because of the fact that Nanox is so accessible and so mobile, you can envision putting many of those Nanox digital cameras in uh, borders, in airports, and simply like you take the temperature today, take a picture of the lung in a snapshot and know exactly what's going on. So let's say I talk about the hardware of uh, Nanox and for a minute, let's say, you know what, this is a probe, this is a sensor. And let's imagine that we put many of those globally, connect them via 5G to the cloud, and now we have one big cloud that all the information flowing out there. In the cloud, what we do, we start transactions. We send it to AI annotation companies. Why? Because we want to see if the AI can say, hey, you may have something suspicious in your chest or your hand. Then we connect with radiologists. We also connect with the health ministry, with insurer, etc. So the cloud is a way, is a way to connect between the patient that may be in Africa to the best doctor in New York City or in Israel, okay? while using softwares like AI annotations. 
I think that the SK is very famous for wanting to make a social impact. I think the chairman of SK made the public many times the idea of social impact and I think Nanox falls into this category 100%. Furthermore, I think SK Telecom is one of the big innovators for 5G which are looking for content for the speed of internet. So synergy between the content of medical images to 5G is very, very easy to understand. And lastly, SK Hynix is one of the largest semiconductor manufacturer in the world. And as you know, Nanox is establishing in Korea, the factory to do that and in that sense, synergy is also there. We are shooting for a quite a large capacity because we think that Nanox eventually will be in many, many devices. So we're planning for about 1,000 wafers per month, which is uh, more than enough to cover very, very big uh, capacity of X-ray full body scanners, but also X-ray devices for security, X-ray dev devices for automotive, X-ray devices for semiconductor factories. So you know, X-ray is not only medical. And uh, our goal is, uh, you know, and the Nanox is like Intel inside. Nanox is like the underlying technology of the future for X-ray in medical, but also in other things. So our idea is to establish the, to our roots in Korea, from one end with very, very uh, strong manufacturing capability, but also to work with the young society on the AI companies and the other things that Korea is so strong at. Oh, easy. It's very low capacity compared to what I just said to you, because each one of our scanners has only one, maybe seven chips. No, no, no. We have one R&D factory in Japan today, and the main uh, factory is going to be in Korea. And this should supply the world uh, demand of uh, X-ray source based on uh, semiconductors. Japan factory is small R&D. This is from the days of Sony. And now in Korea, we're doing automated factory that can uh, be more efficient and uh, more suitable for mass production. Well, I think, uh, you know, Israel is uh, also known as startup nation. And I think what it means is that uh, Israel is a small country with great ideas, ideas that are applicable for the market in Korea, in the US and others. The number one place for technology is actually Nasdaq. So uh, it's very natural for Israeli companies to be listed in Nasdaq because the views of the investors from Korea, Israel and the US is always looking for new technologies in Nasdaq. Yeah, you know, uh, Nanox is, uh, the business model of Nanox is like Xerox. It's a paper scan. I think the second half of next year, uh, we will start to see multiple countries with our scanners connected to the cloud. And every time we take a scan, the scan will be translated to revenue.